Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm gonna do a little bit of a different kind of video today. I'm gonna do a little flip through of this completed, uh, it's the pen thing ink swatch plot log that I started using back during um, 30 inks 30 days and it's now completely filled up which means I've got 48 inks uh, cataloged in here with my thoughts and my ratings on them and I did it was a special request and I thought well that sounds like fun so here we are and I also have my uh, Tamoy River Paper 68 GSM in the background because I think a lot of times what I realize is this this is my fir first impression and then this would end up being maybe not my final impression but uh, where I landed uh, so far with each ink that's in here. So we may want to refer to it and we may not, but anyway, it's here for us. So I will link in the description where you can get one of these if you're interested. But the main thing is uh, looking to see, you know, how this whole idea progressed because I didn't feel the same about it in the beginning. I wasn't sure if it was for me, but by the end, I was really sad that it was filling up. So I will uh, let you know uh, the information in the description box. Mine was sent to me free by Brian. Thank you very much, Brian, at the pen thing. And it's, it's a nice heavyweight paper for any, anybody who hasn't seen it. So it did very, very little bleed through. In fact, it was only, I mean, we'll see as we go through. It was only a tiny bit where I got really carried away. So let's just start in the beginning here. I, I started September 1st, 2019, and I finished it December 2nd of this year, 2019. We started right in with Sailor, um, this beautiful light blue. And right away I thought, it was going to be too light for me. But uh, I was really awkward with the, the whole rating system in the beginning. So, but it's still a record of what the color looked like. It, it, and it shows it, it's, I've written with the broad nib and I've done my best to give it, to give it the ratings. So I'll try not to editorialize too much here, but it, it, it's bound to happen. You know what? I think I need to move this book just for now because it is a little bit distracting. So I'm trying out a new set, so things are a, a little bit, you know, weird, but I need to let the kitten rest. And as soon as he hears my voice doing a video, it's like a license to go berserk on my desk. So I'm in my dining room. And here we, we did, uh, what I did was I went right straight through um, ink flights during 30 inks, 30 days in September. And... Uh, was still a little bit awkward with the the system at this point, but realized that there was a lot to be gleaned through, you know, looking at saturation and flow and shading. All of these things really are what we're looking for. And we do want to know about drying time. In the beginning, I fussed over how to rate drying time, but I ended up realizing that five would be average. And then I just usually make a note to myself. <laughs> well, you'll see as we progress, because if the number is uh, higher to me, that would be it took a long, long time or something. So these were really, really pretty uh, inks, these Sailor uh, Gentle inks that came in that ink flight. And then this one here, the Sailor uh, Grenade, I ended up uh, being gifted a whole bottle by a generous pen friend. Her initials are right here. I don't want to embarrass anyone, but that was just such an amazing thing. It is an awesome color. I really love it. Highly saturated and it, uh, it did a lot of shading. It was just really nice. Oh, I love that apricot one too. I remember that. So here I put the drying time was slow. Okay, but I was confused and I put three. It's okay. As long as I understand which way I'm going with the rating, which I've come to sort of adjust that now and I think I'm doing better. <laughs> it, it's really something. Oh, I thought this would make a good uh, Christmas ink. That's amazing. It is really pretty. It's, it's kind of almost a Chinese red, but it's really bright red. Okay, and then we went, we went, okay, next were Straits Pen Honest Ink. Those inks really impressed me. And long term, I sure hope they're going to be available because obviously I have too much ink, but um, I hope they'll still be available and I'm glad to be able to look back and see what I thought of each one of these. See, I was leaving a lot of things blank in the beginning, but I ended up really liking this system. <clears throat> 
I really like this color and the flow. Subtle shading, great ink. So I really like the slow poke green, huh? Broad nib, slight spread on this booklet. Yeah, it was really saturated and it was a, a, a really strong ink, but I loved it. Okay, and then two more. Oh, these look almost, they look a lot alike. I'm not sure whether our lighting is doing us any favors either. These are both blues, but hmm. the sad stormy Swedish sea uh, was very popular. A lot of people liked that one. It was beautiful and it was very saturated. <laughs> no sheen, no halo, no shimmer. So I was just warming up each day. Got a little easier with using this rating system. Okay, other favorite blue blacks. Oh, okay, so this one is more blue black. I don't know if I can really show that though. That's the thing. I think I think my desk is the best place to do the videos, but it's almost impossible with the kitten. And he's having a, a, a bit of a wild day. I think he picks up on the excitement because this is Christmas Eve today and he's just all excited. Okay, here's the brown one, the, the bleep sapia. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Okay, and we're getting toward the end. I know the last one, yeah, the last of the Straits pen was the uh, Bougainvillea Purple, and that's my ink of the year. That was my favorite ink that I've encountered the entire year out of all the reviews that I've done. And I meant to add up how many reviews I've done this year, but I haven't done that yet. It's, it's a lot though. And this impressed me and I did order a bottle. That was the one bottle I allowed myself after 30 inks, 30 days. Gorgeous ink, just so well behaved and so bright and cheerful. So then we went into Colorverse. We had seven of the Colorverse inks. I started to jot in per mil prices some places. That's something I mean to do going forward. I'll show you my setup for this year because I don't have another one of these booklets, but I'm gonna use the same size and very similar paper to do a, uh, you know, just a do-it-yourself one. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. So I guess I won't stay long on each page, but you'll be able to pause if you want to look at, uh, but these are just my opinions, but I, I thought that the dust storm by Colorverse was too weak for me. I, I just wasn't going to work for me, but it would for some people. And then opportunity. Oh, that was pretty. But there's a lot of really nice um, magenta inks in that category and Colorverse is so expensive. So... Okay. Oh, I loved Colorverse Martian. That was really nice. That was tempting, actually. But uh, one just uh, has to control oneself <laughs> whenever possible around ink. Okay, so the Arabella was, it was pretty and bright, just not for me, I guess. Okay, and then, oh, this one I thought was a little bit weak color. You, you know, I like either bright or dark saturated inks. <clears throat> that was the Allen Hills 84001. And then, oh, Birmingham Golden Gazette. I wish that was available. Oh, only issue is availability. See, I'm, I'm grateful for any notes I make because I can come back through later and recognize, uh, you know, what the issue was or what, what the deal is. And then we went into some uh, just uh, not ink flights. So Diamine Soft Mint, I really like that one. I, I haven't hardly met an ink I don't like. There's just a few that might not be saturated enough. I have a 15 mil bottle of the J. Arbonne Lee de Tay. Really nice, real well-behaved ink. I, I love that one and it flows good. Whenever it gets a good mark on the flow, it ends up being one that I like. And then this was an Instagram win. I won a bottle, a 50 mil bottle of Robert Oster Netherlands Erst, which means first, their first pen show. And it was pretty, but it wasn't really my favorite. I've, I've shared quite a bit of that. I have a half a bottle left. It's limited. The, the color wasn't quite, it just was almost there. But I like Diamine Safari better. And I think there may even be one that I like better than that one. So then we did a Birmingham Gurbana Pink. That was pretty. Flow is excellent. Actually, all the Birmingham inks seem to flow so well that I, I usually know that unless the color is just objectionable to me, I'm, I'm going to love it if it's Birmingham. And then here's one I really loved. Um, Birmingham Knox Old Glory Blue. But I have a bottle of Fountain Pen Revolution Blue Black 
which was an economy ink too that I, I'm going to use till it's gone. And it, and it just is good for everyday note taking. So I would just put those two on in par with each other, really. <clears throat> At least for my purposes. I put that in a, oh, basically, well, not basically, um, in a medium nib for note taking and for everyday journal writing. And I love it. In either, either of these inks, I love for that, but I need to use this one up. And then I did uh, J.R. Bon Ancre Blue Provinci Turquoise, I guess it's the name. That was really pretty. I've got a lot of blue though, a lot of turquoise, and nothing gets past Diamine Aqua Lagoon for me. So, that you know, this is beautiful. But oh, I even made a note of, a note of that there. Yeah, and I have what's left of the bottle of the Diamine Aqua Lagoon. So then, oh, I got caught with this one, Robert Oster. Um, fire on fire i had a beautiful sample from my pen friend nancy and i ended up buying a bottle i just the way that shaded the way that behaved in a broad nib it is a little bit dry but it just is so gorgeous when you get it in a wet enough nib you it's just so pretty color shading sheen yeah i couldn't resist it back then i i hadn't quite solidified my myself about uh, being um, more careful with the you know over acquiring ink and then this one <laughs> this one on the wish list because of the price the uh jacques sarban grease de, de hule um gosh i i probably not saying that right yeah that's a real contender that still comes to mind without even looking through anything as a favorite uh, gray because it behaves better than noodler's lexington gray in my opinion with what I write on and everything. So I go back and forth thinking, well, but you know, the Noodler's Lexington Gray is half the price, but I have a solution. I'm gonna use up all the gray that I have right now, so. But I won't forget that one, and I hope it'll be available when I want it, <laughs> so. And then I went into Jacques Sarban. Oh, okay, we're doing, this was when I was doing the 10 that, that um, the 10 inks, the samples that Goulet Pen sent, that's right. I remember now. Let's see. They were all really well behaved, really nice inks. They cleaned out of the pens like crazy. But I do, I, I'm satisfied and happy with Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Um, probably one day I'll have a reckoning with black ink, but I'm not, I'm not really into black ink as much. I'm more into gray ink and colored inks. So then we did Rouge de Orient. Well, that was pretty, but I really liked uh, Rue Granat, R Rouge Granat, and also, um, well, that uh, that Sailor one. What was that? Um, grenade. Sailor Grenade I liked better. Okay, and then we, next was an orange ink. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I thought this was real close to Sailor Apricot. Yeah, that was really pretty. Really nice. Cost factor. Okay, cost factor kept coming up. It shouldn't because if I keep it to just one primary color in each color group, then we should be able to get whatever we love the best for ink. But you know my story. I got carried away in the beginning. So now I, now I need to use up what I have. So here is um, Vert Amazon. That was a beautiful, beautiful green. I put solid choice. I did put the money mark there, beauty. Uh... This one wasn't saturated enough for me. The uh, amber, the amber of the Baltic, or I think is the name of it. I don't care for this color. Not saturated enough. <laughs> but, you know, this is really helpful for me to refer back to. And here was the blue. Beautiful, flowy, saturated, and water resistance. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And it had sheen on the splatter. Okay. Sometimes I come in with a red pen. Violet Boreal. Okay, I liked other purples better, so I was safe from that one. Feathered on the copy paper. And here was um, Midnight Blue, would be the English equivalent, I guess. Very impressive color flow and saturation. Those were all really flowy and, and nice inks. Oh, and then I did some shimmer inks. So let's see if we could get that. See, I've got some natural light to the right here, but I'm used to having it on the other side. So <laughs> the kitten has just displaced me, but this was the carob, oh, there was some way to say that. 
You just have to read it because I can't say it. Beautiful gold shimmer, good flow, nicely saturated. Yeah, it had a range of shimmer, depending on which pen I was in, you know, because it could really put that, that shimmer down. It really can. Okay, then I went, I got a little bit back and forth here. I did one of the Twisbees, the Twisby Orange, which is just gorgeous. Very intense orange with medium to light shading, quite nice, yeah, and price is good. It is a limited ink, but the little bottles have just the right amount. Like, I think it's 18 mil. Just perfect. I, I wish more companies would do that. And then I did a standard, KWZ Standard Gray Plum that was sent by a pen friend. Um who lives in Poland where this ink is made. So it was just amazing. It was a dark in the nib, but it was really well behaved. Um, and I liked it a lot. So then I did two shimmer inks, one with a silver, a green with silver shimmer, and then the green with a gold shimmer. People really liked this. I, uh, you know, viewers were excited, I think, about the greens. So let's see, Diamine Magical Forest. Really, really pretty. Lots of shimmer. Hmm. Oh, and I thought I was going to like this one more, but I fell for this Diamine Golden Ivy. It's just gorgeous. There's something about it. It just charmed me. I love them both, though, and, I, and it was so nice. The generous pen friends who sent these, um, thank you very much, because I've still been able to write with them, even after the review. Then I did one of the Monteverdes. I did the Blueberry Muffin. Great flow. Okay, I think the color was just a little dull for me. Hmm, I wrote down color, but I didn't do myself a favor of what does that mean. Definitely flowing really well and shaded well. Good dry time. I, I, was, I just wasn't super excited about it. I probably have other colors I like better. And then this is the only bleed through I had. The Bunga Box Le Lamont bled back through in the Painted On, and that's very rare. I don't... We didn't see much of that. We might have seen like one seep through, just tiny bit of seep through there, green. So th th this paper is just really hardy and good. And I think the one I've chosen to go on with is a Claire Fontaine and it's gonna work good too. That was a real nice, the Regency Blue, very saturated. It bled on the copy and Loistrum, but that's, you know, that's gonna happen sometimes. And then my very final one was just an ink that I reviewed a long time ago, I think, but I put it in my Pilot Vanishing Point and I wanted to note this down because this was a really good pen and ink combination and I'd had a struggle with that medium nib uh, Pilot Vanishing Point. It, well, it's the only, I have, let's see, two gold nib pens and then I have one that may be gold nib, but I'm not sure because it's a vintage, I think it is. So maybe I have three, but it just, it's been a challenge finding a good matchup, but this was a real good one. I need to come back in and make a note that that was just perfect. I don't think I'll forget that though. Okay, so that's this notebook. And then of course, I, I always rely on this. Um, this is the, you know, we're not gonna do a full walkthrough of this one because I wanna show you my setup going forward for 2020. But um, what I like is I get to kind of start out and see what it looks like, do the, uh, chromatography and now I'm doing a double page spread the last ink that I did you know I do it like this now so that we can see the splatter the the water resistance test 20 minutes uh, submerged and then we also get chromatography so this is more of a lasting it may be wasteful on the paper but um, still thinking about that I may be able to do some something different maybe a flap on or tip tip in tap in whatever they call it because even if it gets real thick, it won't bother me. But I do depend on this book a lot for initial um, just launching point to see about dry times, to see what it looks like in the various nibs. But it's interesting that by the time I get over to, you know, kind of the assessment stage in this uh, notebook, sometimes it has changed. And that, that's kind of the way it is. That's why I love samples. I, I don't uh, ever intend to just go for bottles. So this is my setup and you've seen it before. It's one that I won in an Instagram um, drawing and it's by Kerno Book, Book and Leather. It's a gorgeous little, very minimal traveler's notebook, but I love that because it doesn't, 
take up much real estate and it, it, it holds everything. And I still don't mind putting the little tab. Um, this is just a, a blotter page. So what I've got in here is real simple. It's just my currently inked that I'm in right now. Let's see, get that out of the way. I'm really awkward here. I'm so used to my other space. Um, so it's my third one that I, I'm filling up. So what I'm doing this next coming week is going through and I'm going to be cleaning out all my pens with very few exceptions. I just inked this one up and so I think this will carry over. I, I um, greased my Twisby and oh I was so proud of myself and got that all serviced and I love Diamine Aqua Lagoon and it's not going to be empty so that'll probably stay. But a bunch of these pens here even the Caveco needs to be cleaned out and definitely the Mont Blanc and the uh, Oh, this is a review pen. All my review pens are in here and they're ready for clean out too. So I just have them in here because now my little kitten wants to like, well, knock them off the desk and bite them and all that kind of thing. So we don't want any pen casualties. So I've got this and then this will be my replacement for uh, having finished the pen thing booklet. And it's already in use, but I thought, you know, I, I didn't want to just start a new one. So this is the 90 gram Claire Fontaine and it's lined and I had started it just to, uh, oh, oh, there's my, I taped in my ink criteria. I did that this morning. Something that kind of grounds me and gets me to remembering what it is that I'm mostly looking for, as if I'm going to forget. But <laughs> So I had started it just by, just quick, not a review, pen allowance video. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I just did this, I guess, for in conjunction with things, but I just decided to start with um, the last one that I did the review and just practice and see if I could fit what I wanted. So it's a little messy. We'll just have to put this little, this is the little uh, blotter that I made out of watercolor paper. So I'm just good planning to just do what I was doing with that notebook. That has a lot of red sheen, but it's hard to show. Huh. So I, I just wrote down the things and made the notes, kind of transferred that from the little CVS notebook, because I'd really rather see, um, I'd rather have it in a pocket size that can be carried with my currently inked, <coughs> excuse me, and I'd rather have it not in the CVS, because the CVS, everything I write in that needs to be, um, I need to find the correct combinations and there aren't they aren't 100%. You know, some of the pens write too dry or the inks are too dry for that paper. But with Claire Fontaine, you can try out everything. And so this this will be perfect. And I've got another one, little pocket sized one. But this one has a lot to go. There's quite a bit left. So I think it said it had 90, no, 96 pages, 48 sheets. So even using up part of it, this will, you'll be seeing this more because this will be at the point in the ink reviews where I say, so what did I think of this ink? So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, it was kind of fun for me to go back over 48 entries in this and to see how much more appreciation I have now of using a system like this, even if I just write it in. And um, I was thinking about doing it with Tomoe River paper, but I have, I just have so little problems with Tomoe River paper. I can write with just about any pen and ink on it. And I use it all the time for letter writing. And I also start in the uh, Tomoe River ink journal. So I thought, well, let's just use what we have, not make any purchases and keep on going in here. So that's where I'm at. And I'm doing some reviews of my year, trying to, uh, go ahead and remember there's so much good happened and so many pro progresses not to just dwell on any negatives. So that's what I've been working on. So thank you for watching and let me know if, if uh, this was, uh, if this is something you do as well in some form or another. I love to get new ideas and hear what you're doing as well for any kind of an ink journal or uh, way to capture what you uh, you know, the inks that you're trying out. So, cause I, I plan 2020 is going to be a banner year for, uh, for trying out inks because of all the, um, uh, samples that I have ahead to try out. And I, I know I'm going to feel so good about getting around to them. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably in the same 
uh, situation where you want to try new inks that you have a new to you that are available that you just haven't had time to try. So have a very Merry Christmas and, and happy holidays, all the holidays that, that you're celebrating. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.